Have any of you guys in your entire life ever seen such an overwhelming presence of negativity in your life? I mean, you open the news on any source and it is just oozing negativity. Let's take a look at this. You got war, you've got rumors of war, you've got layoffs, you've got the wheels falling off of our you know, top companies. <laughs> Nothing can stop inflation, energy's out of control, Tropical storms are coming, and they're coming early. The climate's a disaster. We're shooting each other all over the place. Our government's corrupt. We can't stop spending money. Even good news is bad news, because when the good news of uh, higher-than-forecast jobs <laughs> comes in, then the Fed just has a reason to keep nuking the economy. So down we go. Oh, oh, oh good old queen. She's dying, right? <laughs> like, I mean, look at this. Look at this. Monkey pox outbreaks and private sex parties. I mean, you just can't have nothing these days. And uh, I guess I wanted to show you this because I want to try to illustrate a point for you guys. So first of all, obviously, when you come to a conclusion as an individual, you're going to do it likely one of two ways. And the best way, um, usually, is to deduce, right? This is when you deduce something internally for yourself right you figure it out on your own you come to your own conclusion and the other way is to have something introduced to you it could be an idea it could be a factoid it could be a piece of information and you process it from there all right but you either are introduced an idea or you deduce it for yourself right and i would just like to challenge you for a moment to deduce for yourself if you can why you think so much information is being introduced to you so negatively like it is why do you think everything is so overwhelmingly negative like it is i want you to chew on that for a minute all right well, we're gonna move on we're gonna talk about uh, old putin here because i think uh isn't it a little ironic that putin of all people is the guy who's being honest about the state of the west and our inflation problems the two challenges on the minds of most working families are prices at the pump and prices at the grocery store. Both of these challenges have been directly exacerbated by Putin's war in Ukraine. The price of gas is up $1.40 since the beginning of the year when Putin began amassing troops at the Ukrainian border. This is a Putin price hike. Because he calls it out for exactly what it is. It's a result of our own domestic fiscal and monetary policies which have led to this event it's led to this crisis it's a crisis of our own doing and it's multifaceted there are a lot of people responsible for decades of just gradual worsening policies okay but it is certainly not his fault <laughs> it's like all the people trying to blame putin for this have no clue what they're talking about i mean putin didn't sanction himself right yeah, he invaded Ukraine, but he didn't sanction himself. Biden did that, right? And now the entire world, the entire planet is going to pay the consequences for those sanctions, right? Because we don't have Russia's energy anymore. We don't have her oil anymore. We don't have her natural gas, her potash, her fertilizer, her nickel, her zinc, her wheat. None of this stuff. Not only do we not have it, the rest of the planet doesn't have it either. And this is not insignificant. You're talking about billions of people literally billions of people on this planet are going to suffer because not because of putin's invasion of ukraine billions of people will not suffer because of that but billions of people will suffer because of our response to his invasion to ukraine right so these sanctions are the most extraordinarily egregious stupid inexcusable policy action i have ever seen in my entire life they're inexcusable. There is no reason. You tell me why someone in Brazil or someone in Cambodia or Libya or Egypt or Spain or Portugal or France or hell, how about even the people of Russia should suffer for this? Why should they freeze this winter or starve right, for, for lack of energy or a lack of food? Because they either couldn't get it shipped directly or they couldn't grow it because there's no fertilizer, right? And the yields are too light. Why should the whole world pay for this? You really got to ask yourself that question. And you really got to take ownership of, uh, of your support for this or not. Because it is extraordinarily egregious what we've done. 
And the thing about it is, is that it's not going to get any better. This whole situation is uh, it's not getting better, right? Uh, just look at oil, for example. This new paradigm is not going away. Cheap energy is a thing of the past. And we're going to have to just buckle up for what life looks like from now on. I mean, life is not going to go back to the way it used to be. You know, before the virus, before the pandemic, that's over. I mean, it's going to be nonstop stress from this point forward, right? And the reason why I'm telling you that is not uh, fear porn or anything like that. It's to help you get mentally prepared. And we're going to talk about that. But you got to understand in terms of the markets and where this is going and all the things we talk about on this channel, why this is fundamentally bullish for our investment thesis, but it's more important than that. It's bigger than that. you got to be mentally prepared for this entire situation that's developing uh, because I don't think people really appreciate what's taking place here. And it's important to do so because, look, even as OPEC came out and said, look, we are going to pump more oil, the market came back out and call their bluff because they know that since September of 2020, OPEC has failed to fulfill quota production each month since September 2020 with a deficit of currently uh, 2.8 million barrels per day, which is just to say that even though they promised to pump more and more and more and more, over time they just keep falling further and further and further and further away from the quota that they say they're going to meet, right? So in other words, at best, you're just trading sideways. You're not actually meeting these quotas to begin with. And so the market's calling the bluff. They know there's no more oil coming. There's no more energy coming. There's no rescue out of this thing. None. And that's why I keep pounding the table on things like these rate hikes, okay? Because I talked about preparedness and getting ready. It's not just about your portfolio. It's not just about managing your money and your financial risk. It's about your mental health, your mental preparedness, hell, your spiritual preparedness. Because look, let me put it to you this way. When we talked about this event, right? We talked about this event weeks before it happened. We knew when the bonds got up here, we were going to have a problem in the markets, okay? We've hashed that out a million times. It wasn't just so you could prepare your brokerage account or your bank account. It was so that when it happened, you knew it was coming in advance. And therefore, because you knew it was coming in advance, you had the calm, cool, and collective to chill and not to overreact and not to start throwing darts or catching knives or overreacting or being like, you know, any of these people. Think about all the people who didn't see it coming. They were freaking out, had no idea what the hell was going on or where we were going next. They were just being, you know, tossed and turned and, and pushed around by the waves of the sea. It's kind of like if you were... Um, you get onto an elevator and it just suddenly starts falling, scare the hell out of you, right? <laughs> the elevator starts dropping on you. But they make rides that are literally that very thing. You get on an elevator and it's a free fall, except it's a completely different experience if you know it's about to drop on you, right? Rather than it just dropping on you randomly in the wild. And going through these markets is no different. If you know what's going to happen in advance, or at least have a really good idea of it, hell, get it halfway right. You're going to endure the storm much better with much more calm than everybody else who just gets blindsided by it, right? And so this mental preparation, this mental preparedness goes so far in how well you're going to perform and how well you're going to hold up in the long term, even the short term. Because you got to think, all the people who weren't prepared for this move right here when the market starts sell selling off, right? This is what's happening to them. They're looking to the same people, the same news sources, the Bloombergs, the Wall Street Journals, the Yahoo Finance, the whatever garbage, the Drudge Report. The same people who didn't tell them it was coming, they're looking to them for advice. And they're reading these headlines about how that bad things are and how negative everything is. And they're just not getting any good information. And... You know, and I guarantee you this is what they're doing because for however many viewers I have and subscribers I have, I'm telling you, just like I teach you guys the Pareto principle, right? 80% of my new subscriptions come when during 20% of the events, which is to say big days in the market. When the market does something crazy down or crazy up, people go out there and they start looking for information to see what happened, what was the reason behind it. And that's when most of the subscribers come right people are reactionary right 
This is most people. Most people are going to react to things rather than be prepared for things. You know what's a good example of this? Let me tell you something real quick. That stupid virus, all right? I was telling people to get ready for that before it came. I was pounding the table telling people. Look, it was so obviously being telegraphed that it was on the way. I just don't understand to this day why it was so hard to convince people to prepare. And it's not like you had to do anything crazy, right? It's like, look, just go to the store and buy a few extra things. Go buy a few masks while they're still in stock. You know, go um, take a look at your brokerage account because if this is right, if this pandemic comes, people are going to freak the heck out. Right? <laughs> I mean, you're going to have a massive sell-off event just like we got right here. The same kind of thing, right? And nobody wanted to take any of that advice. I got called crazy. I got called a conspiracy theorist. I was accused of digesting too much, uh, you know, fear porn. Um, I told, I was told I had irrational fears. And so once the virus finally came, the same people who called me crazy and didn't want to listen freaked out the most. These people lost their minds when the rodeo shut down, when the MLB shut down, when the NBA shut down. Well, when everything shut down, right, school shut down, they lost their minds. It was like the world was ending. And it didn't phase me one bit because I knew it was coming. How can you be phased by something that you see coming in advance? It was being telegraphed to you. Quite frankly, nobody has a good reason not to have seen that coming because it was all over the place, all over the place. Okay, so you could have prepared for that just like we prepared for this. All right, but people don't want to listen. They want to react and... Look, I just don't want you to be that person. I, what, I, what I'm what i really getting to here is that, uh, you know, I think we can see what's coming next. You don't have to be reactionary. Remember, I have hashed this out so many times on this channel that there's a difference between narrative and reality. And the narrative is winning right now. But that narrative has a very low ceiling, very low ceiling. And there's only so much they can do, all right? And you got this guy coming out here just saying the craziest stuff. Since it took office, families are carrying less debt. Their average savings are up. A recent survey from the Federal Reserve found that more Americans feel financially comfortable than any time since the survey began in 2013. They are just running out of time. And so in terms of our investments and what's coming, we're in the right place. Oil, gas, uranium, bullish precious metals, bullish, agriculture, bullish. Why wouldn't they be bullish? Why wouldn't they? Look at what's going on in the world. We have put ourselves in this position. I mean, the only way to be in a position this good is to, to artificially put yourself in one. And that's exactly what we did with the sanctions and with getting ahead of ESG and cutting off oil and gas before there was a, an alternative for, it, you know, we put ourselves in this box. So, of course, it's the perfect storm. We made the perfect storm. This is a product of our own doing, right? So, don't get shaken around by all this nonsense. It's all, it's all it is is nonsense, all right, for the most part. Um, and there's a, look, I have never seen so much negativity in the markets in my life. I go for away for a week. I come back and everybody's perma bear. It's like, what the hell happened? And I'll tell you what happened is that you're reading too much of this nonsense. And you're not paying enough attention to the fundamental. You're ingesting too much narrative and not enough reality. All right? And we have covered reality on this channel too much that there's no excuse not to be in tune with it. Now, I'm not saying, look, actually I am saying things are going to get bad. Right? It's like you think about what the world looked like before that pandemic. Okay, The world's never going back to that place. In fact, things could get progressively harder from here. All right? And that's not a level of fear porn. That is to try to get you prepared so that when it happens, when it happens, when it happens, you are prepared. And you're not the one freaking out and just losing your mind and running to the government for help and like all the rest of these people did. Just willing to give up your freedoms and stuff because you have no idea what the hell's going on. And you, you're looking for somebody to take care of you because you're lost. Don't be that person. I'm telling you, be confident in yourself. And your ability to sustain yourself and prepare. Look, get yourself in order all around. Get your brokerage account in order. Get your trading in order. That's great. Get your bank account in order. Get your relationships with your family, your spouse and everything. Get it all in order. 
right? Get your relationship with God in order. Get everything in order that you possibly can to be your best person, right? Because um, if things continue on the path they are, that we're on, you're going to need all of those things, all of them, all right? And this is not fear porn. Just like knowing the virus was coming was not fear porn. Like knowing the crashes were coming is not fear porn. It's just reality. This reality is on its way, and you have to prepare for it. So just get ready. Now, there's only so many things um, you know, that I guess I could say, but uh, in terms of these trades, I think we're on the right track. You just need to hold tight. Hold tight to these commodities because they are the future. Even Merrill Lynch is talking about uh, you know, FANG 2.0. It's fuel, agriculture, aerospace, nuclear, and gold. I mean, that's all the crap that I've been buying for, you know, the last five, six years. <laughs> it's like I have you know, I'm built for this moment, and I'm convinced that we're going to be vindicated right in the end. So just be prepared to ride the wave and understand that, uh, you know, we this probably is a bear market. All right? It probably is, and we probably have a lot of downside to go, and there's this is not going to be easy, but it doesn't have to be hard either, Okay. You just need to be looking long-term at the future. Even the World Economic Forum, all right, is talking about at least $50 trillion in spending to get this green agenda done. And that's that's completely separate from the $150 trillion that I told you guys about, about what Yellen was talking about. Okay, so this they're about to print so much money. You have no comprehension. Of what's about people say that this was a blow off top can you believe people actually think that this was a blow off top because of this bounce how the hell does that make any sense to you draw a line all it did was went to where it was going anyway this drop has nothing to do with it it was going there anyway <laughs> you know what i mean you can do that for everything you go chart anything and all this all this money stimulus here did was get it back in the trend that it was already in that's not a blow off top, people. It's not a blow off top. The blow off top is what's coming later. It's going to be absurd. It's going to be ridiculous. Just get ready for that. But and that's not necessarily a good thing. You know, you're going to have to play this wisely. You're going to have to understand the situation fundamentally so that you can survive on the other side. All right? Because we are coming into a global uh, sovereign debt crisis, all right? And it's not going to be easy. This is the fourth turning. And we're going to have to endure a lot of hardship, but that doesn't mean we can't protect or even make substantial amounts of fortune potentially along the way. So with that being said, let's hop into the charts. All right, big picture. Let's zoom out and take a look at the broad markets. Going to start with the Dow Jones sitting at just under 33K. And look, guys, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Uh, this is your first meaningful target. Until you get there, I'm not sure anything happens. Well, you either come here or you break this. One of the two, right? Either come set this low, potential low, or make a new high. But one of those two things has to happen, and it could take weeks if not months, right? And I do still think, and you can see it's getting denied at the 50, I do still think that we work our way down, and uh, look, this is ultimately the first place we have to go. It just makes complete sense to me i just see it playing out i see it happening it's a rational thing to expect um, i don't think you're asking for a lot i think the market's going to give it to us and um, until that's out of the way then you're just using this opportunity to sell okay you're using this opportunity to get out of bad trades or mistakes or possibly flush up with cash to you know maybe buy more at a better price uh you know same thing down here and the NASDAQ, you know, uh, it's having trouble here, and it's probably going to come back down. Uh, I think we're testing the same place, somewhere around 10,000. I just don't see why we wouldn't. S&P, no different. Still coming down. I would like to see 3,400, but in the case of the S&P, it is possible that we stop at 36. We'll see. But uh, regardless, the chart doesn't look good. We have more downside to go, and there is no reason to suspect that when the next sell-off comes, it won't be ugly. And I would suspect that commodities are going to go with it. This is why I've been talking about double bottoms and stuff and, and using the uh, uptrend to reassess where you are in your portfolio. Do a gut check of, of, of your investments, okay? Are they bad? Are they good? You know, What are your core positions? What are your gambles? Assess all this stuff. Make sure you know where you are 
here on this bounce before we come back down on the next leg lower. We're actually going to start with silver. I think silver has an enormous amount of potential that it's building right now and it's getting ready to explode. I think it might have uh, the highest vertical leap of all when we turn the corner. We're going to start right here. Jeff Clark, uh, he tweeted about this uh, intercept and this is huge. So this is a 250 gram meter intercept from First Majestic, okay? 40 years of gold left there. It's a pit bigger than AT&T Stadium. 65,000 meters of drilling to go, which means they could still find more. All right. And uh, it allows for 500 acres of new roads and 1,100 drill pa uh, pads. Wait for a big re rebound in AG. I think he's right. I think this was a substantial find. It's a, it's a very high grade. You know, AG's 50% gold now. All right. So I just want you to keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> but uh, guys... In this zone down here, I don't think people really appreciate the kind of value that we have. And I know a lot of people are scared to buy down here, but just like I've been talking about for so long, you have to accumulate. You have to accumulate. There's just no way around it. And um, I still suspect that we're going to come down here and retest this. I really hope we do because uh, I have cash set aside for such an occasion. Um, I did go ahead uh, on that intercept. Uh, make an entry here, all right? Um, but I held 60% uh, of that uh, to come back down in here, if we come back down in here. So that's what I'm looking forward to do. I think uh, the entire sector looks so good. Um, I mean, it is so, you know, this is a really good example too of how eager people are to get back into commodities because silver took off like this on just, the smallest headline, the smallest headline, the smallest hint that the Fed was going to turn around, this is what silver did. Okay, so you're talking about AG was up 12%. I think Endeavor was up, let's see, you know, 16%. Every, all of them were up, you know, 10, 12, 15% in a day on the slightest teensy weensy hint that the Fed was going to pivot. You guys think that this market is done, that this is a bear market? You guys are insane. You don't understand. They, the People cannot wait for the signal to buy back into this stuff. They cannot wait. And that's why I'm telling you, you have to be accumulating. You just have to be confident in the fundamentals of the market and what's taking place here. And don't get bamboozled by nonsense like all oh, this negativity and stuff. Yes, the market's in a bad place. Yes, broadly, we have problems. Structurally, we have problems. You know, there are a lot of problems to be worried about, and there is a lot of legitimate concern to have. But in our spaces, in the things we invest in and talk about here, you need to be accumulating no matter what with confidence. Now, after silver sold off more than I expected, remember I went and kind of did a gut check on why that happened and what I missed. And in doing so, I found this uh, Wyckoff accumulation pattern, which we see here, and I put out this tweet about it. And back then, we were potentially forming this spring. And I said, look, if you can come back up here and you can come back down and test, then that will validate the structure, all right? <clears throat> and I think that's exactly what's happening because uh, since that moment, we have come up and we have come back and tested. And I think that we're kind of kind of zigzag. I don't think people realize the kind of stealth move that's going in the silver right now. I would be really surprised if we broke down below. I think at worst you do kind of a, a creep. And I think that you have to be all over this. I, I think that this is exactly what's developing. It could be invalidated if we fall out. And if that happens, then okay. But right now it looks like this is exactly what's playing out. And again, you should be accumulating. Just another testament to how bullish the sector is and everybody knows it is the uh, merger of Yamana Gold with uh, Goldfields Limited. So they bought them out for an equivalent share price of $7, all right, a share. And on the news, GFI sold off, which is not unusual. It's not unusual for the buying company to have a sell-off, okay? But Yamana was barely up. It came up here, all right, but it sold off huge down on the day to end up only like 3% on the day on the news. So not only was Yamana bought out for about a 40% premium, 30 40% premium, um, but it barely moved on the day. Okay, so the market <laughs> thinks that this was a bad deal, but obviously Goldfield Limited was willing to overpay 
such a substantial premium to get such a solid resource like Yamato. And so this is a testament to how the insiders feel about their own sector. This is ex extremely bullish, and this is also a testament to um, uh, opportunities in the market, like guys like uh, Warren Buffett or uh, Rick Rule talk about, where the market's getting it wrong because they don't understand the reason to be in it in the first place, right? So they're selling off and thinking this is a bad deal, and really it's a testament to where we're going, all right? So I think this was extraordinary bullish sentiment indicator, all right? And uh, I was a huge fan of Yamada. I owned a good chunk of them. Remember, I've been talking about my leaps that I bought back here. Got them at 33 cents. We got up as high as $1.28, I think, right here before the sell-off. And I actually uh, sold them here this day for uh, 95 cents. So I'm out of that position now. Um, but um, overall, very excited. It's a very positive indicator, I think, for what's coming. And it's likely a sign of more to come. I think that if you are one of the uranium guys that are here for the uranium content and you happen to be watching this, you really need to start considering your exposure to gold and silver because the time is coming. All right, let's hit up uranium. Let's run down the list real quick. URA coming up to a double confluence of what will be resistance now of moving averages on the daily. Let's check it out on the weekly. Yeah, about the same thing. So, um, you know, again, I don't think anything has changed from my last several videos or for long-term outlooks uh you know this could take weeks if not months to play out this is when you just need to be patient again i'm going to keep reinforcing this adding cash holding it being patient using these up moves as an opportunity to reassess your portfolio should you be here in the first place do you have things that you made a mistake on do you want to reallocate your funds take a small loss maybe and just get ready for the next leg down that's what I'm doing. I have sold half of the things that I bought down here where I said I was going to buy. I have now flipped for a profit. And I have even more cash than I started with coming up from the, the sell-off. And I am ready to deploy that cash if we come back down for this retest. And I feel very, very convicted about that move. I just see it happening. I can just see it happening all day long. Maybe it doesn't. If I'm wrong, well, now you have cash to deploy, right? Now you have some flexibility. And guess what? Your portfolio is going up anyway. You really can't lose. But if you don't take advantage of the opportunity that you're being given, then you could stand to lose. You are in M. Not a whole lot different. I'm not very impressed with the price action or the volume being denied at the 50 that way. SMR, I think, is complete junk until the overall market turns around. I don't even want to touch this crap. Uh, unless it hits some kind of crazy low, but I won't even have a stink bit in for this stuff. I'm staying away from it. Long term, I'd like to own it. All right. Long term, I want to own it. But this is not something you want to own right now. It doesn't even make sense. Uh, I don't care what the float is. This just is just an ugly chart that really needs the rest of the market to be bullish to have a chance. It's not going to be bullish on its own. It's not going to hold weight like something like Cameco will. Look at this chart. It looks substantially better than all of the other charts we've looked at so far in the uranium space. And that's because this is a leader. This is something that you can own and you can accumulate a little bit higher levels than the rest of the stuff because the downside risk is so much lower. All right. So I still think you come and you put in a double bottom or something like it. I just do. Maybe it doesn't happen. But again, if it if that happens, you need to buy aggressively. All right, accumulate as much as possible. These big names are so attractive, so safe. Even NXE looks a lot closer to Cameco than it does anything else. Very healthy. Got to close above the 50 with a, a nice lower wick on it. I think the leaders are telling a better story than the rest are. And I don't know what the, the discrepancy is here, but it's worth noting and paying attention to. And um, with that being said, I'm going to keep watching it. Let's go back to the daily. Okay. Doing good on the uh, weekly, but not so much the daily. So that kind of paints a little bit different picture. Um, but you can see this playing out, can't you? It just makes sense to me. That's just what I think is happening. I keep saying it, but, you know, that's my take. I don't think anything has changed. So utilize this as an opportunity zone uh, to reallocate or think, right? Um, if you want to accumulate, I would do it in small tranches. I would really wait for a retest down here, guys. I think the broad market's got to sell off again, and I think we're coming with it, and I think that's okay. And to put it into perspective for you, if that were to happen, you could sell 19%, come down and kiss this trend line, and still be 
in an upward trend. There's nothing to worry about. Totally healthy, totally fine, totally okay. You know, it's going to shake a lot of people out, but if you're looking at it and being ready for it in advance, like we've talked about in the onset of this video, then you're going to be the one who stands to win from the situation. You know, and as you go down the list, um, the names get worse and worse or lower market cap and they don't hold up as well. Uh, you know, DNN and UUU, they're coming up and getting back into their upper trends, but they're just kind of barely doing it on no volume, which is to say no conviction. And I just want to see something more than that. I am still looking to see a retest. And, uh, you know, we're going to go through every single one of these. It's going to be the same thing. So there's really not a whole, a whole lot of point to it. Um, but, uh, you know, the this, this sector's fundamentally bullish. So feel free to accumulate on good buys, good opportunity. This is a weekly view. We're going to get into ratios now of GDX URA. This is an inverted head and shoulders suggesting that GDX is about to outperform URA. Um, it might break down. It could break down. It could break either way, but it is about to break because you can see it's coming to an apex here. Uh, this trend line we have confirmed and validated several times. I know it's a good trend line. And as is this obviously is as well. So this apex is about to have to make a decision and it's about to have to make it on volume. I suspect considering what we're about to look at, um, <clears throat> like this one, GDX to XLE, I think gold's about to surprise a lot of people. Okay. I think it's about to break out on everything. And I think it's going to do so on this fundamental backdrop. I think something is coming and the market knows it. And you can see it in the charts. You can see the headlines coming. This is significant historical level. All right. It tends to hold pretty well. When this ratio hit here, it broke clean through. All right. It's oversold on the RSI. The breadth has never been so deep. I mean, look how deep it is. You know, there's a, a small section in history when it was worse than this. By every metric, it is oversold. This ratio is substantially oversold and it is due for a significant bounce. I don't know if there's been anything better than EOG. God, this is so good. This is so good. After this sell off, I mean, first of all, you had negative oil. So that was an obvious buy if there was ever an obvious buy in the history of the world. You came up, you double bottomed with a nice, beautiful W pattern, and you've just never stopped ever since. I mean, it's just been nonstop up. You've had a great dividend. I mean, what a great company. And it's just going to keep going up, you know. It's keep going to keep going up. It's at all-time highs. It's nothing but blue sky ahead. You know, if you track it, oh, my God. If you were to track it historically, I mean, you might come all the way up here to 232 before you turn around. I mean, even if you were to come and make a straight line up, that's another 63%, you know. Just wouldn't surprise me. Oil's probably gonna have a blow off top on this thing. It's just, it's just nuts. Kendler Morgan, you know, breaking out of these patterns. The entire sector is extremely bullish. I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do about oil other than buy it? You know, it's just, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it, man. It's just all gonna keep going up. Just keep going up. Keep going up. You gotta have exposure to oil. Arian Phosphate, I'm going to keep pounding the table on these guys. Uh, you can see the weekly moving averages here. It's holding up pretty well on them. And it also likes to honor this uh, ascending trend line too. So, you know, we're coming up on an apex and I'm a strong believer in it long term. You know, I'll continue to add if we dip down. Uh, you know, I believe in the company. I think that they have something that we need and we will need more of domestically. And so as a North American phosphate producer, I think that this is a pretty safe buy if you have the timeline horizon uh, to hold out and let it develop. I think that this is still fundamentally very cheap in the long term. Now you can do your own due diligence and decide for yourself or leave a comment below if you agree or disagree and why. I'd like to see that. And Vital Metals, same thing. I really like this company. If you're looking to expand your exposure into rare earth, then I would suggest this company. This is what I'm doing. Um, they've already got a deal uh, with uh, English uh, car company, auto company. So this is kind of a big deal. I think that this company is already undervalued. It should get re-rated. And I think, uh, you know, it kind of trades in isolation from the broad market, which is a bit nice, right? You don't have to necessarily worry about the market's volatility. It's a little bit on its own. And I kind of like that too. You know, you can kind of trade it on its own. 
And uh, so if you're looking for some exposure into rare earths, I would highly suggest Vital Metals. You don't have to put in a lot. Um, I mean, if this thing breaks, it's got a lot of upside, right? If there's anything to it. So, you know, you can turn a little into a lot. You don't have to get crazy, but certainly get some exposure. Some other companies I don't talk about too much, uh, but I'd like to get new positions back into when they get cheaper. AMD, uh, look to make my first entry here about 7350, somewhere in there. Certainly the uh, 200 on the weekly would be a nice first entry. Below that, you know, I'd probably be willing to add at 60 bucks. You know, this is a great company that's not going anywhere. The same thing is true for TSM, you know. Um, we are going to need their products. Uh, they're developing new facilities here in the United States that provide safety from any kind of conflicts with uh, foreign nations, which I like in this developing world of bifurcation. I mean, I think that these companies are actually getting stronger. Do you really think that we're not going to need NVIDIA's artificial intelligence you know, processors and CUDA cores? You think people are going to stop gaming? No. This stuff's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, if we can come down and catch a great deal somewhere, I'm absolutely jumping on them. So these are the kinds of things I'm hoping to buy in the broad markets and the tech stocks if we can get a low price, right? If we get enough of a sell-off, these are the kinds of companies that I want to own. And, of course, I keep an eye on emerging market uh, ETFs as well. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. We'll track them as the deals become um, apparent right now. And there, there's nothing really, uh, I, don't, I think, worth chasing, but... Uh, certainly worth watching. Okay, so what's the too long didn't watch in a couple minutes or less? Well, I'll put it to you like this. The market's likely will take another leg down as we're pretty clearly in a bear market. I don't think we've bottomed yet. And if you look at it with the right perspective, that's a good thing because we'll probably, um, in our commodity trades, take another leg down with the broad markets. This gives you time. Time between, first of all, now and then, to be accumulating more cash, whether it's by depositing the money or reallocating your bad trades, taking profits from some things that maybe you even got lucky on. Maybe you just need to take profits for things you've been holding too long. Whatever your personal circumstance is, you can evaluate that for yourself. But at minimum, you need to be evaluating that, right? To take advantage of what? What comes next? What's coming next? Probably more downside. But understanding, understanding the fundamental difference between the broad markets and the commodities that we trade, the things that we talk about on this channel need to be owned. They need to be bought on weakness because they're fundamentally bullish and there will be a separation. Okay, Just look. Look at the price action when the market gets even the faintest hint <laughs> that the Fed is going to pivot and pause. Like I've been talking about for so long now. People rush in. The, the markets explode 10%, 15%. Some of these companies were up 20%. You understand people cannot wait to get into this market and put their money in, put it to work, right? They're just waiting on the signal. So in things that are fundamentally bullish and things that are already undervalued, you just need to be buying and accumulating with confidence. And beyond that, I would just say prepare yourself personally and mentally for the world beyond that because it's not all just about the markets and your money. I mean, you as an individual, have to be ready for the world uh, that's taking shape right now because likely the world that we grew up with is never coming back. And the world ahead of us is really an uncharted territory as the world bifurcates and globalization breaks apart. And, uh, you know, a lot of people will be fighting for power and there will be shortages of a lot of things. And you don't know necessarily how bad it'll get. It might not be bad at all. But at the very least, you need to be aware of it happening so that you can make your own personal discretion and discernment on how to prepare. And that way, if it does happen, just like everything else, you'll be prepared for it. And because you're prepared for it, it'll be a completely different experience for you than it will be for everyone else who gets slapped in the face. So uh, I say all that to say, just hang tight, be strong, be confident, invest in yourself. We're all going to make it. Everything looks pretty good, guys.